Hey guys, well we're uh, we're out in the garage and I've been doing a little bit of work getting uh, a couple of my uh, motorcycles ready for the spring here. So got KLX 250 there and uh, my V Star 650 and was changing the oil and uh, whatnot on those as you do in the springtime. And uh, well, as it turns out, the uh, the V Star has got a significant gas leak. So uh, when I fire it up, uh, I notice that she is leaking. Leaking right from down here, so I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah, you can, I'm sure you can see it. Look at that, leaking away. So we're going to turn the pet cock off here. And, uh, yeah, so um, I suspect it is probably the needle and seed on the carbs, right? Um, but don't know that for sure. We're, what we're going to have to do is dig into it and find out what's going on. The bike runs great, but, you know, can't have leaking fuel. That would be... Uh, don't want to make an ash of myself. <laughs> that would be uh, not good. So we need to uh, get at those carbs and find out what's going on. So the process here to do that on this machine is to uh, take the seat off. I've got a, for other guys that might be doing this on a V-Star 650, I have a custom Mustang seat. So mine might be a little bit different than yours. We'll take that off. We'll take the gas tank off. We'll take the uh, Speedo off. And that will let us get into the top of the engine, into the uh, air box, and then the carburetors underneath. So, um, yeah, so that's going to be the process. Uh, freezing out here in the garage today. I, I can't believe it's so dang cold for April. But anyways, um, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. So, hey, let's get after it. Okay guys, so the first step here is to uh, take the seat off and then we'll take the gas tank off and the speedometer. So the, the seat here, as I mentioned, I've got a, uh, it's a Mustang seat, so it's a custom seat. But uh, the removal process really is the same, I would imagine, for all the seats. I can't quite remember how, whether it's any different or not, but I don't think, I don't think it actually is. There's a 14, uh, 14 millimeter nut at the back. And in the front here, there are two 12 millimeter bolts. Uh, you remove those. I've already moved them and then you just lift the seat off. So you just lift it off at the back first and then there's a bit of a hook on the underside of the seat. I don't know if you can see that there, but there's a there's a hook there, right? Right uh, right here. Okay, and uh, that's what uh, just pulls it off. So let's take the seat off. Just gonna move that out of the way for the the moment here. <clears throat> okay, so then as for the uh, the next step to get the gas tank off. Uh, there are, uh, we, we, need, we need to go in the, then go and take the speedometer off, so that's the next bit here, so let's just do that. And there are three uh, Allen key or hex, whatever you prefer, uh, bolts slash nuts, machine screws, that are holding this on, one here, one here, one here. And then what we need to do to, uh, to get this off <coughs> is uh, we need to go and actually pull her up. And there's a speedometer as well as a couple of electrical uh, cables are connected there. So we need to disconnect. We need to disconnect that uh, speedometer cable. So let me just keep pull this up a little bit, get a little slack going. So that we can get that speedometer cable off. So I'm just unscrewing a speedometer cable. I have to do it with my, I can't really show this to you too well. Try to get the handlebars out of the way. Okay. okay, speedometer cable is unscrewed. And all I'm going to do is uh, unhook the electrical connectors here. They're just your basic uh, push together ones. And you can't get these wrong because they're different size connectors, so don't worry about them getting them back together. They're very obvious. Okay, great. So we've got that off. All right, so we've got our speedometer off so now the next bit is to uh, disconnect the tank itself so uh, that'll be the next bit okay so the next step to uh, get the gas tank off uh, is to uh, remove the fuel line so that's what we're going to do now so first step obviously is to make sure your pet cock is in the off position here um, the other thing then is probably a good idea probably a, a smart plan to grab a rag right just to catch the few drops that may come out of the fuel line. So removing the bracket first with a pair of needle nose pliers and then 
just pull it off yeah and sure enough look at that there's definitely just what was in the hose right just what was in the hose is in, is in there so we want to get that off okay so uh yeah Okay, good. So we've uh, we've got the hose off, and uh, now what we're going to do is lift the tank off. So let's do that next. Okay, guys. So now the process is to take the tank off. So that's what we're going to do next. So we do have a wiring harness. So we've got our speedometer cable and the uh, the wiring loom going through going through the center of the gas tank here. So as we're lifting the tank up, we want to make sure we're pushing those uh, down through the hole at the same time, through the hole in the top of the tank. Um, additionally, we've all, obviously we've already got the, uh, the fuel line disconnected. If you haven't done that yet, you obviously must do that before you're pulling the tank off. There are two 12 millimeter bolts, one on this side, one on, one on the other side here, that are actually securing the tank from the rear. Um, so you, what, you take those two, uh, two, two 12 millimeter bolts out, and then uh, you essentially just lift the tank off. But the way that that's done, because it's secured at the front with two rubber mounts that are on the frame, you actually need to kind of slide the tank backwards, right? Lifting it up, wiggling it, sliding it back, pushing those cables through the hole, and then she'll just lift right off. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna get our, get our speedometer cable and our cables pushing through here. Give us a little bit of a wiggle back and forth, and there you go one gas tank. So we'll just set this aside and then we'll, we'll continue on. Okay, so now that we've uh, got the gas tank off, I think I'm gonna show you a little bit more of those uh, rubber mounts that we're holding the gas tank on for anyone else that's kind of curious. So these are, these are them. There's one on each side and that sort of slides into a slot on the side of the gas tank. And that's why you need to, you know, wiggle and move the gas tank backwards so you're past these so you can then lift the tank off so hopefully that explanation makes it a little bit more clear so now this is the uh now that we can see the top of the engine we've got the got got the uh, gas tank off then you can see the cables right that's what was going for the speedometer right two different plugs there as well as that's our uh, that's our speedometer cable, of course. So those are things that need to get you know when you're putting the tank back on, need to go through the tank again. So um, yeah, so here is the air box. So the next bit here now to get at the carburetors, which of course are you know right there. There's our carburetors, right? So the next bit there is to actually go and uh, you know pull that. Uh, Pull that air box off and to get at the top of them. Now that, this is if you want to completely remove the carburetors. I'm not quite decided whether I'm going to or not. Uh, it is possible to get at them, uh, the underside of them now that we have the tank off, um, from here to get the bottom of the float bowls off. So to get, you know, to get these off that the float. So um, that may be that's all that's necessary on this bike because the bike is running okay, it's running well, it's just uh, leaking a lot of fuel. So I'm gonna have a little look around here and see if we can figure out what's, what exactly is going on with it. Okay guys, so I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to take the float bowls off first rather than actually taking them the whole carburetors off. So that'll avoid us having to take the air box and those sorts of things off, assuming that will solve the problem for us. But I think it's worth giving it a shot. So. Uh, the way we do that is first off, initially we need to go and take this cable off. So just let it drop down here. So I'm just going to disconnect that connector there. Okay, and just drop that down here so that it's hanging. So that when we eventually take the float bowl off, it can just come off. So there's, there's four screws, uh, four bolt screws, machine screws here on the bottom. So I'm going to start taking those out. And the one on the side here actually also holds our idle adjustment, so um, we just have to be cognizant of that when putting it back. That we make sure we put this back correctly to uh, you know to make sure that we have that still there, still have the idle adjustment bracket included on there. So let's take these out, and that is our bracket for the idle adjustment. Okay. So that's going to have to go back onto that side of the bottom of the carb bowl. Okay. 
Okay, now one of the things I should note here right now is that, uh, you know, is that uh, when these bikes are stock, they have what look like Phillips screws, so star-shaped screws on the bottom of them. Okay, they're actually not Phillips. They are JIS, Japanese Industrial Standard Screws, as used by all um, Japanese bikes, okay? And um, the thing about those, is, as you guys probably already know, is they strip out really, really, really easily, okay? So what you want to do, and what I already did, because I was, oh, a number of years ago, was in these, was in these carbs before, is when you take them off, and believe me, it's a pain to get them off, but when you do get them off, change them out either with hex heads, okay, or with uh, standard bolts. Now, obviously, when I say standard, I don't mean standard, I mean metric, but you know what I mean, standard head bolts, right? They're the same metric size. And unfortunately, I can't remember what size they are right now, but I'm sure you can Google that and look it up. But do change these things out there, pain. The other thing is to get the original JIS, again, they look like Phillips, to get, to get those out. Don't even try doing it with a regular screwdriver. If you don't already have one, go invest the money, get a proper JIS screwdriver. Believe me, you will be very happy that you did because that's the only way you're going to get these things out without stripping them, and even then it's a challenge, okay? So there's a little aside. I don't have to do that because I've already changed them out a while back, so a number of years ago. So looking at the float bowl, we got the float bowl off, uh, and it is very clean in there, as you can see, okay? very clean so that's a good sign but i think our problem is with the float the needle and seat here that's what i'm thinking is the problem so let me just uh move the camera and see if we can take a look at that together okay so what i think is going on here is i think that our uh, needle is not moving okay so the needle is right there and it's actuated by the floats you see that but look at that that needle See if I can zoom in here so you can see it. I don't actually think that needle is doing anything. Do you see that? It doesn't seem to be doing anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, pop this pin out of here. We're going to drop the float down, take the needle out of the seat. Okay, we'll drop that needle out of the seat and clean it up and put it back together and see if that then seems to move. Okay guys, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take the float out of the uh, carb here on the front carb. Obviously there's two carburetors, we're doing them one at a time, so we're going to take this uh, take this float out. We're going to take the uh, little pin out here that uh, holds the float in, okay? And then what we're, all, we're, we're going to do is there's going to be a, uh, the a needle is going to be in there as well, so we're going to make sure that we don't uh, lose the needle. At least that's the plan, that's the hope, that's the dream. So. I'm going to grab it here with a with a needle nose pliers and just give us a little bit of a pull. Okay, we'll hold her up there so we don't lose anything. To get the pin out. Okay, so there's our pin. And now we should be able to just drop the float right out of there along with the needle. You see the needle there, right? Dropping right out of the seat. So that's perfect. Okay, great. Okay, and there we have it. So um, you know what? Unfortunately, this all looks ridiculously clean. Uh, what does that mean? I don't think this is our problem. I'm going to have another little look at that needle, but uh, it looks incredibly good to me. Here, let me just, let's just take it off. Okay, put the float aside for a moment, but let's look at this needle. And it just, it literally, let's see if we can zoom in on this. Uh, that kind of focus yeah so th and that literally just fell out of there which of course is what you want there's absolutely no no decay no nothing sticky on it no bad gas so I don't think this is our problem I don't think that's why it was leaking so you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put this back together again um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this back together I'm not even gonna bother pulling the other one apart because I'm, I'm almost sure it's gonna be identical um, and then what we're going to do is we'll take the air box off and we're going to look at this from the top side. So that's what we're going to do next. So let's just go ahead and put this thing back in here. Might as well do that, eh, while we're, while we're at it. So what I need to do, <clears throat> what I need to do here is put the, is put the, uh, the needle 
back onto the little actuator here and then stick her back up inside there. So that may be a little easier said than done, given this is upside down, but that's going to be what we're going to try to do here. So. Just have a really good look at that. Make sure that she's all in there good. And actuating as it should, and it is. So, okay, great. So that is good. Now we're going to put the bottom of the float bowl back on, zoom it all back up, and then we're going to take the top off here. Or actually, you know what? Maybe we'll leave this like this for now, and then we'll just work on the, uh, on the air box, get the air box off and look at the curbs top down put that on after who knows maybe we have to take it off again right so yeah let's do that okay guys so uh now we're going to do is we're going to take the air box off off of here and have a look down on the engine and see what exactly down on those carburetors see if we can see anything else because it doesn't look like it's a needle and seed issue to me at least on the face of it from what we saw already so let's start taking this off here so we've got a a rubber boot here that needs to come get loosened off. And it comes off like that. This then just kind of pulls out as I recall. As I recall, let's see here. Yeah, that just pulls out. Okay, good. So now we can kind of We'll move the camera, but we can see down inside there now a little bit better. So let me just reposition the camera so you can see that. Okay, so now with the top of the airbox off, which was right here, it was on there like that, right? We just pulled that off. We can now see down into the carbs to see a little bit better what's going on. And so I'm just looking here to see why possibly they could be leaking. Already seeing a little bit of an issue that that slide was a little bit stiff. Huh. Let's move that one a little bit too. Ah, you know what? I think we're gonna have to take these carbs right off to find out what's going on. They look so clean on the inside, but you know what? I think we're gonna have to take them off. So what we're going to do, we still got the uh, float bowl off of this one. Um, I'm just going to very temporarily put that float bowl back on there so we don't jostle or bang or, or move or lose anything. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the carbs right out. So, uh, yeah, I will uh, bring it back when we, uh, when, uh, when, as we're pulling the carbs out. Okay guys, to get those carbs out, the next step is to take the sort of the additional half of the air box off, which is this right here. And it is just attached, as you can see, by, uh, you know, by this little band that goes around here, tightened by this uh, right here. So we're just going to take that off. And uh, yeah, so that's how that's going to go. Uh, we're going to loosen this off and then we're going to pull her up and out of here so that's going to be the process so can i do this with uh, one hand let's just see let's find out yeah there we go is there anything else hold that on there nope i don't think so oh maybe she yeah come on out of there baby okay well you know what i gotta put the camera down but we're just gonna pull that out as you can see it just comes out of there Okay, guys. Uh, well, we're back out in the workshop here, uh, taking a look again at the uh, at the V Star 650. I did get that air box off and was about to pull the carbs off, but you know what? I'm looking at how incredibly clean that the carbs looked when we took the float bowl off, uh, and uh, in, you know there just seemed to be nothing wrong with the needle or seat. Um, so you know what, I, you know, I, I, this is the next day here, so you know, I've slept on it a little bit, and you know what I think it is? I think it's actually the float bowl gasket. That, uh, that bike is a 2009 bike, and um, I think the float bowl gaskets have just simply um, gotten old and gotten hard. And so what we're going to do is we are going to go and take those uh, float bowls off again, um, I picked up uh, I picked up some uh, float bowl gaskets um, from the local Yamaha dealer, and uh, we're going to put those in, and we're going to see if we have a better result. Now, if we don't, well, no harm, no foul. Uh, we will then pull the carbs off as I had intended to, anyways, and have, go in deeper. But you know what? 
I don't think it's the needle and seat. And really, if it's not the needle and seat, that's about all. Then, and it's not the uh, the the carb, uh, the carb float bowl gaskets. I'd, I'd be at a loss as to what it could be anyways. So uh, we're going to give that a shot. Um, let's see what happens. And uh, yeah, let's crack on. Okay, guys, let's take these uh, float bowls off again here and uh, just see what those, what that gasket looks like. You know, I, my, uh, my bad, you know, when I took these off before, I was so intent looking at the needle in the seat and just generally speaking, the rest of the condition of the carburetor, looking at how clean, you know, the, the jets appeared and all sorts of things that I frankly did not look at the float bowl gasket at all. Um, it's such a, a rare thing to have that kind of issue that um, this very mill may not be it anyways. We'll see, but I don't know. My, my gut tells me that it might be, so that's why we're going to double check this. We're going to replace it anyways. Um, I, as mentioned, this is a 2009 bike, so what are we at there? So we're at uh, about 14 years old, something like that. So, um, yeah, so it's uh, no, no harm in changing her out. It's probably to do anyways, even if this isn't the issue. But, uh, okay, so we got that one off. Let's have a little bit of a look here, see if I can show you guys on here, so. Yeah, it's a little hard to know. It is, you know, when I'm compressing it with my fingernail, it does seem quite hard. It does seem quite hard, so. Um, okay, so I got picked up a kit. Picked up a kit. So we've got the new, the new rubber gasket that goes around here, so let's, uh, Let's take this one off and uh, put some a new one in, and uh, yeah, we'll do that with both the carbs, and then we'll uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, so I've got both the float bowls off, and uh, now we'll let's uh, let's take a look at them a little bit more closely. Okay, guys, so we've got both of the float bowls off. Um, uh, this is the um, the one on the left side and the other one on the right, so I don't think it really matters, but in any event. And when I look at the, um, you know, at the gasket, it does look a little bit hard um, on both of them. Um, I mean, obviously very clean, like just like the rest of the carbs inside, you know, I, I try to do maintenance on this thing. I've had it a long time. I've had it since it was brand new, this bike. And so, you know, I do try to look after it a little bit. Um, so, it, but it, so it is quite clean in here, but you know, this gasket does seem a little hard. So is that our problem? I don't know. We're gonna, we're gonna replace it anyways. I picked up this kit and we are going to replace those gaskets. So let's do that now. So just opening this thing up. Okay, two separate little jets. That's nice. I think this kit came with jets and a bunch of other things, which we don't really need because actually my bike doesn't have standard jets on it anyways because I've put a hypercharger on it, so I've re-jetted it. But um, this is the only way I could get these gaskets was to buy the kit. Um, so that's what I did. So let's just do them one at a time here. So use the dental pick to just get these out. See how hard these are in here, yeah. See what it's like when we get her out. And yeah, compared to the other one, yeah, it is kind of stiff. You know, you wouldn't, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, eh? Maybe I'm wrong? I don't know, we'll find out. Let's see here, so. <clears throat> put the new one in just make sure she's in there all the way around nice now I think some guys actually will use a little bit of Vaseline or something like that uh, to you know on top of the uh, you know when installing the gasket and that might be a good idea uh, but I'm not gonna actually do that so uh, that might be you know well we'll see I don't, I don't think it's required, so let's see if we can get this one out here as well, carefully. I don't want to break it. I might keep these as spares if they turn out to be not the problem, so don't want to ruin them. And again, this one is, 
I don't want to say it's ridiculously stiff, but it is a little stiff, so I don't know. I don't know. Maybe my theory's wrong, eh? But we're going to give this a go anyway. So these do only go one way. It's a little bit obvious. They've got this tab at the top, and you'll notice it's somewhat um, off center. And also, obviously, the flute bowl is also. So, you know, you got to make sure you get that the right way around. Pretty obvious. You put that in first and then just press it into the groove. Now, if you had a dirtier carb than this, obviously this, this thing looks pristine in my view. Um, but if you had a dirtier carb, you would want to clean this channel out really good. Any foreign debris in there at all could, you know, displace the uh, the gasket, and that would be a problem. But this, these are these are like factory fresh, perfect in terms of cleanliness, and that's frankly why I'm. Thinking it might be the issue because when I looked at the needle and seat on both the carbs, it looks fantastic. The inside of them looks super clean. So, anyways, okay, so we've got those on there. Let's go over to the bike and install them. Okay, guys, we're back at the bike and we're now going to reinstall the float bowls. So, we'll start with uh, the one on the left here first. Um, and there are, you know what, if for anybody that's maybe taken these off and have forgotten, these cables are actually, the, the end is actually coated, okay? So the black end is actually the left one. And here, here's the right one. The right one is white, okay? So you see that? So if anybody's watching this and wondering, well, which one goes where? Black goes on the left, okay? So let's do that. Um, the other thing we have to watch, you know, I just want to make sure that our needle and seat's still there, our little pins here, floats operating correctly. We want to make sure we didn't jostle something. We didn't, so that's good. Um, yeah, we'll just start putting this in. Now, the one thing we do have to do on the left side is reinstall the, um, the, uh, the throttle adjustment as well. So there's a plate that goes on here as well. So... Um, this is going to be probably the trickier of the two curves to get back on here, but this is the way this goes. Maybe it isn't tricky at all. Um, just get this started here. It's always a good idea, you know, whenever you can to start screws with your fingers, right? Um, these are, everything on this engine is aluminum pretty much. And uh, yeah, so it's really easy to strip stuff out. So. That's, uh, that's the thing, so there's going to be a lot of me uh, turning this uh, little nut driver here. So I think what I'm going to do now is I am going to probably fast forward through this for you so you can just see what goes on, but really quickly. Okay guys, and uh, yeah, so we've got both the float bowls back on there now. We don't have anything hooked up yet, and we're not going to hook under everything back up yet until we actually test to see, you know, if these are leaking or not. So um, what I'm going to do, and you don't have to start the bike to do this test, okay? All you, this, this bike has a fuel pump, so all you need to do is turn the fuel pump on, uh, by, and that happens just by putting the key in the on position automatically you'll hear it clicking away and that's the fuel pump working um, so um, we don't have the gas tank on it right now obviously so but I think there's probably still enough fuel in the hose to do at least an initial test then we'll test it again with the gas tank on or at least just sitting here right and uh, but let's just let's just for an initial test have a little bit of a look here and see there's our fuel pump going you can hear that and then we're looking for leaks. We'll give it a minute. Now we're not out of the woods here because you know what? Uh, because we don't have the fuel tank on, uh, maybe there's just no gas in the line. <laughs> so not a very good test, but uh, that's an initial test. So now let's go and put the tank on it and see what happens. 
Okay guys, so uh, we're just gonna set the gas tank on there for now, okay? I'm not going to go with the hassle of threading the, uh, you know, the cables and the speedometer uh, line through it, et cetera. We're just gonna sit it here so we can get the gas line back on. Then we'll turn the uh, petcock on and we'll give her a shot. Okay guys, we've got uh, got you moved over so you can see what's going on here. Now the first step obviously is to put the uh, fuel line back on. I am not going to even bother with the clamp. I'm just sticking her on there for now. We'll turn the pet cock into the on position so we can get some fuel going. And this is where the real test happens. Now we're going to flip the key. The fuel pump's going to work. It's going to pump fuel into the carbs. And if they're going to leak, we're going to find out here pretty quickly. So uh, I'm curious to find out. Let's see if the theory was right. Alrighty, okay. We know it's got fuel. And look at that, I am seeing nothing. No drips. I think we have success here. Let me give it another minute or two. So, uh, but yeah, you know what? Believe it or not, it was just the old gaskets. You know, I have to say, I've worked, I've worked on a fair number of things and uh, that's a that that's a rare one. Uh, it's a rare one. Usually, it's the needle or in the seat or the float. I mean, it can be the float as well. Um, but a, a gasket like that for me is a rarity to have that happen. Now, maybe for you guys, it's not. I don't really know. But yeah, look at that. She's still. We've left her a couple of minutes as I'm yabbering away here. But yeah, I think we're good. We got no leaks, so now we got to go and button her all up and put her back together. So that's what we're going to do next, and then we'll fire it up. Let's see what happens. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is uh, turn the petcock off again and pull this fuel line off. We're going to drip a little bit of fuel, but in case it's raw, that's the way it's going to go. Um, yeah, so try to uh, mitigate that a little bit here. There we go. Not too bad. We're going to take the tank off again, and the reason why is because we need to hook up the... Uh, these cables for the uh, for, for the uh, for, for the uh, uh, for the carburetors, so those have got to be hooked up, and that can only be done with the tank off. So set that down, and again, these are color coded, which is really great. So um, we just black to black and white to white. So just find where it goes and click the clip it in. And you know what, I had actually put a little bit of tape on this one to remind myself this was the left one, but you know what, I didn't need to. Honda looked after that for me, or excuse me, Honda. Yamaha looked after that for me by color coding these things, which is great. There's that one in place. And we'll root the white one back up here, get it in place. Um, okay. Now these need to be stuffed down where they belong, here, out of the way. And then obviously the next step is we've got to get our air boxes, our air box components back on. So let me go grab those and we'll put them on. Okay, so there's two pieces to the ear box, uh, this being the first one, right? And uh, it, it is, uh, you got to get it in the right way, small oval hole here big oval hole here the small oval hole goes down and you have to thread it kind of through the frame so it, it goes like this it goes through here and then uh, i'm doing this a little bit upside down so you guys can see what i'm doing make sure you get it onto the air inlet here and this is my hypercharger here so if you guys have guys got v-stars and you're wondering what this is this is my hypercharger when we fire it up maybe i'll show that to you a little bit it's kind of cool has, uh, gives, the, gives the bike lots of air and she goes really good. Um, so highly recommend that, that mod if you guys haven't done that yet. I think it's a little rare on the 650. I think some guys do it a little more often on the, uh, on the 1100, but it's a great mod to do. So now, I got that on there all the way. Again, I'm doing this, <laughs> I'm doing this on the wrong side of the bike so you guys can see what's going on. But uh, yeah, okay, so then we've got that on there. We're gonna tighten her up. Okay, you don't need to get too carried away because at the end of the day it's rubber on rubber. You just start to compress all the rubber, which, you know, you just want her on there and it's on there. 
Okay, good. So the next bit is the second part of the air box, okay, and this is what actually attaches to the top side of the two carburetors, okay. And this uh, oval piece goes on to the piece that we just put on there. Uh, now there is a there is another hose uh, right here. I don't think you guys will be able to see that, but there's another hose right there, okay. Um, and it needs to connect to this inlet here, so. That needs to all get on there, so it's going to be a little bit of a fun bit getting that on there, but that's that's going to be the process. So, not too sure where to start with this, whether this end or that hose at the bottom, but I think here makes sense to me. Okay, so that's on there. So now the next step is to get all of this. I'm going to give myself a little bit of slack here. Get all of this, get our speedo cable and our wires for, uh, the, you know, for the speedometer housing, you know, for the lights and yada yada. That's all got to go through the tank. So that's going to be the next bit. So let's go grab the tank and uh, see if we can get that on there. Okay, so I'll just get here resting a little bit. Now, if you had a helper around, it might, this is one of those situations that might be a little bit easier for somebody helping you. I don't have that luxury. So, let's see what we can do. Okay, with the wires through, no problem. The speedo cable is pretty short, so. Maybe there's a cheat here. Aha. Okay, I think maybe that's the secret, guys. Get it, tip it up and get it from the underside. That might be an easier way. Okay, we've got that through there. Now we have to get it on, make sure we're on those rubber grommets. Uh, I don't remember me telling you that before, but it's got to go on those rubber grommets. Do I have those on there? I think I do. We had to tell by the lineup of the uh, hole for the bolts here whether they were in place or not, and we are not. We're off substantially. So that tells us we've got to go forward quite a bit. Pushing in, getting into that spot where the bolts are going to go in. We're getting closer, very close. Those are still through. How's that side looking? Oh, that looks pretty good. How's this side looking? I think we're there. I think we're there. I think we made it. So the next bit is I'm actually going to bolt the tank on as the next bit before I put the uh, speedometer housing on just because if I am a little bit misaligned I want to know right now before I hook all of this up. So that's what we're going to do next. Okay guys uh, let's uh, let's secure the tank. It's just two 12 millimeter bolts that go in on each side at the back here and again you know you've got the tank lined up right if they go in the holes so there's the test here so let's see what happens ah look at that one's going in there nice okay and this one we'll make sure she's in as well yeah that's good. Okay, let's just tighten them up a little bit. Okay. 
One nice thing about this design is that the gas tank really wants the seats on here, and because it's all those rubber grommets, you mean you could have these bolts completely out, and this tank would not move. That said, um, you know you want them you want them snug, but you don't need to be paranoid about this, right? It's a gas tank, sure, but you don't need to get nuts, right? Just make sure they're tight, but don't get crazy. And that's probably good advice on everything on, you know motorcycles or aluminum stuff anyways where there's torque specs it's always a good idea to do those but uh, we're not going to worry about it uh, not on this bike okay so uh or on these items anyways on the engine or something we would but not on these items now the next bit we've got that secured on there next bit i'm going to hook up the fuel line i don't really think you guys need me to see me do that so i'm not going to bother filming that hook up the fuel line and then we'll uh We'll hook this up and then we're gonna start it up. Let's let's see what happens. Okay guys, so now we're gonna put the uh, speedometer on. Okay, I've got you zoomed in a little bit so hopefully you can see a little bit of what I'm doing. So on the back of this we have, you know, small electric connector, big electrical connector, and we also have at the very center here where we're gonna connect, um, you know, our speedo cable. The speedo cable is the hardest part of this. There's actually a fair bit of extra length for the for the electrical wire. So the speedo cable is the hardest thing. So that's what we're going to do first. Okay. Um, or actually, no, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do it opposite of that. Excuse me. I'm gonna put the electric cables on first. So let's just hook those up. Um, you know what? I'm gonna pause for a moment because I just realized I should probably put something on the tank here because I'm gonna be rattling this around here as I'm doing this. So two secs. Let's let me do that. All right, definitely overkill, but I've got a moving blanket on there now. So now that we can hook these up, so I'll try to do this so you guys can see what I'm doing. So the little cable to the little cable. All right, go right in there, click. And now the big one, hook it in here. Good, okay, and now the, uh, the speedo cable. And that, like I said, is the hardest bit. So I think the best way to do this, and I've done it before, is to kind of get your hand underneath here and use the braille system. There's really not a better way to do this. So. It is tight. Tight, tight, tight. know that this is a it's you know a small child in the house <laughs> this would be a perfect job for them um but uh yeah i don't know why they don't give you just a little bit more length it would make life easier i wonder if i can give myself more length here hang on a sec let me just see if i can fish this up a little bit more seem to be it right there which actually is better that is better that extra quarter of an inch or whatever I got there oh yeah we got her on there how about that I know you guys can't see anything but you get the idea this would be a great job for you know a small child or you know your wife with small hands or something like that it's not hard it's just hard to get in there um, okay good now we can kind of feed her down through the tank a little bit. We don't need it that taut, right? And pull it from the bottom of the tank a little bit, get her down here, and then rest her into the mounts to where she belongs. Okay, that's where it goes. So now what we're gonna do is uh, secure it. So it gets secured here, let me get rid of this. It gets secured here with uh, three hex head uh, bolts. So this is uh, magnetic, so I'm just gonna do that on the tank. And we'll start feeding these things in here. Is that in your guys' way? Maybe that's in your way. I'm gonna do it over here. Okay. So I wonder how many of you guys were screaming at the screen uh, when I was thinking it was the needle and seat saying, you know, check, check, the, check the gasket on the float bowl, dummy. I'm sure a few of you were. 
Um, you know, this is the thing. I, I, I don't edit out my mistakes on these videos. So, uh, well, not always. Maybe once in a while if they're really bad. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, so, I mean, because at the end of the day, um, I think a lot of these sorts of th things that uh, we all do, right? Uh, I would think. Um, but, uh, but bottom line, anybody that wants to work on the carburetors on a V-Star 650, it's not hard. It's not hard. Just take your time and uh, just take your time and there's lots of information on the internet to help you out. Lots of great forums if you've got questions. So um, they're great bikes to work on and they're incredibly well designed. So much nicer to work on than a lot of other things that I've worked on in the past. Just amazing engineering in these bikes. So everything is logical. And even the connectors, you know, color-coded connectors, the things designed to be worked on, which is great. So we've got that on there. So that's all back in business. So now the last thing to do is to put the seat on it, which obviously we don't need to do, put the seat on to do our test, but you know what? We're here, let's get her done, and then she's done, right? So that's what we're going to do next. Okay, guys, so uh, let's put the seat on. Now the seat, I've got a aftermarket Mustang seat. So mine's be a little different than yours, but I believe they secure very similarly. There is a bracket right here, right at the back. It's got like a tongue on it. And it goes into a bracket here at the front. So basically this thing goes in at an angle like this, you get it in there and then put it down and it's secured by one nut and washer at the back end. So very simple. So we're just gonna make sure we get that in there. Where she belongs. Oh yeah, not the right spot. There we go. There we go, and then she goes into the. There's actually a, a bolt, a threaded bolt that goes through the fender, and it's just a uh, acorn nut, and uh, and washer that go on top here. So to hold it on. So let's do that. I think it's 14 mil. I can't quite remember. I don't know the wrench handy. Um, I guess I should have grabbed that first. But let me grab a 14, uh, 14 mil wrench, and we'll give her a go. Okay. Yeah, 14 mil. How about that? Okay, and again, just get it snug. She's good. Okay, she's back together. So you know what? Let's open the garage doors and let's give her a go. Let's see if she runs. Okay, that'll be next. Okay, guys. Uh, so we've got her all back together again. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's fire it up. Let's see what happens. Uh, I'm you know I, I'm pretty sure uh, we've already sort of done the leak test with the fuel pump, but let's give her the real test and fire it up and see what happens. So yeah, let's do her. Okay, let's uh, let's start it up. So, uh, give the key a turn here. Alrighty, we've already got the choke pulled. We've got the uh, fuel turned on. There's only one thing left to do. Let's give her a shot here. Alrighty. Let's take a look at those carbs. Well, how about that? We fixed it, and all it was was uh, darn gaskets of all things. Gee whiz. Uh, it's kind of funny. Sometimes the simplest things can stump you the most, eh? But uh, there, you, there you go. I think I mentioned that hypercharger to you guys. Yeah, there she be. There she is. Yeah, it's super cool. I really like it. Here, watch what happens when you hit the throttle. Take her off choke. Hang on. Okay, so we got her off choke. And uh, yeah, let's see what she does now. So, um, so 
So we know she's running great with the uh, with the choke on, but let's see what she does here with it off. And again, there's the hypercharger. Yeah, sweetness. Oh, I'm really happy, man. So I think that's uh, that's a good little test. We got her done. So we got her done, and uh, yeah. So thanks very much for everybody that stuck around to watch this little project. Uh, we definitely have it running right now, which is awesome. And uh, no longer do we have leaky carbs, which is great. And hey, even got the oil change. That's how I discovered the problem was just getting her ready here for uh, riding season. You know, changing the oil and whatnot. Uh so thanks very much guys for sticking around. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe. I really do appreciate it. Leave a comment and uh, let me know what I'm doing wrong or make fun of me. I uh, read all the comments. I'm going to reply to all of you guys. So uh, thanks again. Hope everybody's doing well and having a, an awesome weekend. Uh, hey, keep the rubber side down guys. Bye for now.